We live in a fast-moving world. All around us, the most extraordinary processes. With access to some of the most fascinating factories, I take you behind the scenes to reveal their production secrets. From craft workshops to international industries. Join me, Francesca Chiarando, as we explore the world's ultimate processes. In this program, we take to the road. Visiting two companies, one in Britain and another in Germany producing motorhomes crammed with innovation and gadgetry. These days, they can be the last word in luxury. Building a motorhome is not a simple operation. It involves clever design, some serious engineering, and in some cases, they want to keep it quiet from the competition. Uh, it's high technology and it's really top secret with intensive testing. I imagine this is probably what it's like taking motor home around England. Computers are used to get the design absolutely right. You cram in an house into a small space. These vehicles are built for the ultimate in comfort, using the ultimate in production. It's a bit like painting your nails, but on a much grander scale. We go to this factory in Germany, where Heimer, one of the market leaders, make their latest range of motorhomes. We're also in Yorkshire in the UK, visiting a company called RS Motorhomes. They build some of the most expensive mobile homes in the world. RS Motorhomes has a fascinating 25-year history. They started making motorhomes for motocross teams, and that meant transporting the riders and the bikes. So they needed something built to last. It's just a little bit special. It's a huge vehicle with a price tag to match. This is in the Super League. The most spectacular motorhome in their arsenal is this, the Emotion. And Mick, who owns RS Motorhomes, is going to give me a tour. Hi, Mick. A vehicle this size has its own retractable steps. Fancy. This is the interior. It's a lot more luxurious than you'd imagine. Yeah, in a minute we'll take out the side. <laughs> to give some extra space and uh, extend it. It's bigger than my living room. <laughs> How much space do you get when it's extended? You get, it's nearly... Uh, 15 foot wide, the vehicle by the time it's extended. And this is all automated? All hydraulic, yeah. That's incredible. It's like a proper living space. You could actually live in here very yeah. comfortably. So now you've got all that space. And it's really comfortable. Yeah. This pulls across here to make into a big lounge. This makes into a big bed. That's your diner area. Here you've got your dishwasher, uh, cookers, microwaves, uh, all round sound music. Everything really is fully loaded with everything you can think on. And if you want to watch some TV... That's so clever. It's a 42-inch uh, smart TV, which is all linked. You can use it as a computer if you want to use it as a computer. There's probably, uh, I don't know, four or five TVs. There's outside TVs on it as well. There's all TVs in back for kids. There's one in front bed as well. If we were driving along, would I be able to be watching the TV as we were going? Yeah, you can. It links to a satellite as you're driving, so you can watch various channels and things. It's linked to internet. It has Wi-Fi. It has everything. In this part of it, this is where it all happens. This is the uh, the driving the seat. driving seat where uh, we get from A to B. With uh, it's got air seats, heated seats, electric windows, electric mirrors, cruise control, full air suspension. <laughs> Even that's luxurious. Yep, it is. Drives beautiful. And through here into the back is the ensuite and uh, the back bedroom. This one's built specially for 
uh, a family. We've got a few kids, so there's four bunks in back for uh, for the kids to uh, sleep. They've all got uh, PlayStations, TVs in every single bunk. Oh my uh, God. MP3 players, uh, whatever really. And even the back extends out. Yeah. I didn't expect that. Yeah, all the back extends as well. So you've got uh, sort of four and a half, five meters width when the ball slide outs are out the back of you. It's so clever. How much would something like this cost? This would cost within the region of 700,000 euros, uh, depending on what spec, what chassis you add, etc. So, quite cheap, really, <laughs> for what you get. A whole different experience compared to sleeping in the back of a cold and cramped van at music festivals. So, how did you start this company up? I started this company uh, when I was about 16 years old. Of 15, 16 years old, I used to race motorbikes, and uh, we used to go in an old van with, with the tent night before uh, when we were racing. So I decided to do an old transit van uh, with some beds in it and an eater, etc. So uh, to make it better for us. So then I did another one and another one and sold them. Were there many options available for most homes at the time? Not really. Uh, uh, people didn't have a lot of money back then, so, you know, it was a luxury to have a motor up. So how was it that the business grew? It grew by uh, just word of mouth, people seeing what I've done and wanting one, and eventually, you know, it just grew from there. Does it make a big difference to your business and to the product, being able to control so much and making so much in-house? It does mean a massive difference because you can control the quality of it. If you don't like it, you can reject it. And it doesn't hold your production because you can get a straight back on and make another part order wherever. The advantage of a vehicle this big is the large amount of extra storage space. The Emotion uses its ability to carry a lot of equipment to the max. It has massive lockers with double floor and under, under floor storage. Is where all the hydraulics are and more storage, the fuel tank for the truck, gas barbecue points, shower points for showering. It also has outside TVs, so as people can sit out under the awning in the summer. This is all the power locker. It's got absolute tons and tons of battery power to be able to, uh, to camp wild in it without having to be hooked up to electricity or anything. These state-of-the-art batteries weigh a hefty 65 kilograms each, cost over 700 euros, and will power all the gadgets on board for hours. Hot summer days where you can just go and get yourself a nice cold beer or a nice cold drink without having to go inside the vehicle. Back here is where all the boys' toys go. People have their motorbikes, push bikes, go-karts, road racing bikes. We have a lot of capacity to do a lot. As Mick admits, tackling a project this big was not easy. It was rather an emotional challenge, and that's how it got its name. 4,500 hours, a lot of heartache and a lot of pain going into the design and to get it right, uh, to be able to even start to build it. Uh, so that's why we called it an emotion, really, because uh, everybody was quite emotional when we built it. Motorhomes are big business. 150,000 new motorhomes and caravans were sold in Europe last year. German company Heimer is famous and much loved by fans of the open road. Their factory is in southern Germany at Bad Waldsee. The thousand-strong workforce build around 9,000 new motorhomes a year. The efficient production line benefits from the sort of solid engineering you'd expect to see from a German car manufacturer. RS Motorhomes are based in the north of the UK, in Yorkshire. Space is everything and customers have high expectations. Modern engineering and technology play a key part, but it all begins with a good design. Using software called CAD, Computer Aided Design, the RS team design a different interior for every new build. So how do you create a design for a motorhome? Do you start with a blank piece of paper and build up from that? So this is the blank canvas that we see here. And uh, we're just going to start to add some cupboards 
and uh, that's the uh, dinette seating area. What kind of things can you customise on a vehicle? Well, for example, depending on how many people need to sleep in the vehicle, the uh, front uh, dinette seating and the front bench can turn into a bed, or it can just be simply used as storage. So each vehicle is designed to make the absolute maximum of all the space in there. That's correct. Every inch counts in these vehicles. Every area is taken in detail and designed to get the most out of that space. Are there any limits on what you can design within the frame? Well, there are certain structural limitations and weight limitations that we have to abide by. Are there any special materials that you use that help in things like weight? Everything on the vehicle is carefully thought out and uh, we use certain materials to cut the weight down. So this isn't just a regular truck that you've taken, put some windows in and stuck a bed in. This is all custom made, even if you might have some pre-designs, it is all made specifically for these vehicles. Correct. All the materials that we use, we try and keep them looking like uh, something you would find in your home, but under the surface, they're, they're highly engineered. Is that a double bed? Because each vehicle is unique, its design has to be different. In effect, the design team are creating a new product every time a new vehicle is ordered. Before the craftsman can begin building the new motorhome, every element of the design has to be decided. This is a panel prep table uh, where he's prepping a, uh, a side of a vehicle. So he's got his drawing, which we've got here, which tells him all the uh, structure, all the points. This is where we're going to cut it out afterwards for a slide out, etc. So Steve just measuring everything out so he can start to router all the forms, uh, get all the structure to it. If you look in this area here, this is where he's took his measurements and he's routed the grooves out, ready for the aluminium to go into. So the aluminium sits flush, so when it's glued, it doesn't rise or show a bump in it or anything like that. The aluminium's are so we can fix screws to it and uh, bolt through it, and so is the plies. So it's to build a frame with inside the panel. This is a very dense uh, styrofoam which uh, creates a lot of insulation both for sound and both for warmth and also to keep it cool in the summer. The styrofoam has a very, very strong shear point so it, it, it won't tear apart like other, other insulations would. So it's a really strong structural uh, material to be able to use. So they've got the first skin down ready. So what they'll start to do now is they'll glue in up the first skin and after doing that, they'll build the layers up, basically like making a sandwich. The first skin is a sheet of thin aluminium. It's strong and light and forms the exterior. Paper is added in between with glue laid on top to help it bond with the styrofoam. The routed grooves are filled with the aluminium, which acts as the frame. The final layer is plywood, which sits on the inside of the motorhome, forming the interior. Wood panels and fabric are added for protection in preparation for the pressure that's about to be applied to bond all the glued layers together. A rubber mat is stretched across air is pumped out until it's half normal pressure. This is enough to squeeze all the sections together. It's left for four hours to dry and is ready for cutting and fabrication. With the panel removed, the layering is clearly visible. Each panel is cut to the right size. Windows are cut out in an automated sequence by a machine or by hand. The build technique at RS is to start with walls and work inwards. Wherever we cut a structure out, we have to put structure back in. Wherever we're going to fix furniture and various products and bolt through things, we have to have timber or plastic or aluminium to be able to do that. Otherwise, nothing would hold together. Once that process is finished, then uh, it, it makes the side of the vehicle. To speed up the production process, they use a special automated drill. The design team's computer files are fed into the milling machine and it will cut exactly the same pattern at high speed 
as many times as required for the build. Sections of the finished interior of a motorhome are made from individual pieces cut out on a computer-controlled milling machine. The section being cut follows the design from the computer. The process is so accurate and quick, only one member of staff is needed to operate it. When the machine is finished, each part is separated and handed over to the furniture department. And in motorhomes, a lot of parts are needed to complete that process. Because RS products are individually designed and hand-built down to the smallest detail, it requires thousands of man-hours and up to three months to complete one vehicle. In contrast, at Heimer in Germany, mechanization is important. Motorhomes can be produced on a moving production line in three days, not three weeks or more like at RS. This machine at Heimer automatically creates wall panels for their vehicles. Aluminium and plywood are fed in one end and insulating foam is sprayed between them. Because the foam is injected, the wall is thinner and lighter. Our sidewalls have a, a tightness like an 80 centimeter thick wall. It's light because um, it's very important that we have a light white cars under 3.5 tons because then you can drive the cars with the normal B license. Our founder, Elvin Himo, founded this technology and, and we are the only one company who used this technology. The Heimer team is always looking to innovate. Their technicians have now come up with a panel that's even lighter. This is our new uh, sidewall. We have here the aluminium in painted in white or if you want in metallic uh, color. And at the inside, the new uh, development is we have it uh, aluminium at the inside. Here we see the polyurethane foam and you see here the aluminium and the paper for the inside. Made from Heimer's patented PUAL technology, this foam is a special polymer blend that is an excellent insulator. It's so special that this process itself is top secret. But I did manage to persuade two of Heimer's experts to give me a demonstration of how they make the foam. Created from the reaction of two chemicals, polyol and isocyanate. When mixed at room temperature, they react with one another to expand rapidly. It's left for about 17 minutes to complete the reaction. When it expands, it forces out all the air and squeezes its way into every corner. As it sets, it creates a dense, closed cell structure. Usually, the insulation in a motorhome is made from polystyrene. What makes Heimer's own foam technology significant is they can fabricate thinner, lighter walls, floors and ceilings, yet maintain the same amount of heat and sound insulation. Once the foam has hardened, a computer-controlled milling machine cuts them to size and shapes gaps for doors and windows. These machines are collectively known as Computer Numerically Controlled, or CNC for short. CNC machines are a key element of many modern manufacturing processes, where computers link design and manufacture. As long as the programming is correct, they are precise and fast. Heimer uses CNC not just for the walls, but the roof and the rear sections as well. When they're done, they're loaded onto a trolley and they head off to the next step of the assembly line. This is where each of the walls, which make up the sides of the motorhome, have fittings like windows and door handles attached. Usually they're assembled in batches of five. They need to keep four production lines running, so the pressure is on to make sure they don't run out of completed walls. Everything is secured with special seals. Like any vehicle, they need to be watertight. 
just one small leak could damage the interior. A motorhome needs to be able to deal with all weather conditions, rain or shine, so how the exterior is constructed is vital. Back in the UK, RS motorhomes are less reliant on mass production than Hymer. One, you've got to have a, a waterproof exterior, so we use uh, GRP. Uh, GRP, if it's looked after and polished and everything, it's almost like plastic, it keeps water off. Glass reinforced plastic, GRP, or fiberglass as it's more commonly known, is one of the most important materials in modern manufacturing. This is a good example of how versatile it can be. It's being used to make bodies for modern tractors. Because it can be molded to almost any shape, it has revolutionized what we can build and make. Boat hulls are a good example. Light and easy to use, fiberglass is also waterproof. Even in heavy industry, it's invaluable. In building, especially in prefabricated homes where you have panels for walls, it provides great insulation. It's lightweight and strong, ideal for the job. Like so many things, it was discovered by accident. In 1931, an American researcher unintentionally pointed a jet of compressed air at a stream of molten glass, splitting it into thin fibers. The rest is history, and fiberglass is now used throughout industry. RS motorhomes also use fiberglass to build their exteriors. Uh, this is, uh, is the matting that they use, and there's different, 450 is basically different thicknesses of mat. So, you know, sometimes we put one layer or two layers or three layers, it's all down to the structure strength, or uh, depends how light you want your part. Here we've got a mould which we're uh, starting to make an internal part. When you're prepping your mould, you've got to put a wax on it so that it, it will peel out of it and not stick. With the wax spread, the matting is positioned and the resin applied. The resin is made from polyester. It dissolves the binding in the fiberglass mat, which makes it easy to shape into custom-built fittings. So the resin, he paints it all into it, and eventually it soaks into the fiberglass matting, and uh, as it cures, it softens the fiberglass. It looks easy, but they're just dabbing stuff all over, but you have got to have a skill using resins and brushes and things, because if you get an air pocket in it, when you take it out of a mould, there'll be a great big hole in your fiberglass, so you have to take a bit of care. So you've got to know what you're doing. It's not quite as easy as it looks. To add colour to the fibreglass, they use a polymer gel. It's brushed into the mould before the fibreglass matting is laid. The gel is the outer colour and skin of the vehicle, so, you know, if it's a white vehicle, we'll use a certain white gel on it. If it's green, it's green or whatever, and uh, it saves us having to spray the vehicle. So the colour is embedded in the fibreglass itself, which cuts out the whole painting process. Once it's set, a quick trim and polish is all that's needed. This has uh, come out of a mould, and as you can see, this is the white gel we were speaking about, which is all now hardened and uh, becomes the outer surface, which is highly polished, and that then becomes a part which is taken through to production to be fit straight onto a motor room. Once each fibreglass piece is ready, the team manoeuvre it into position. The crane is capable of lifting several tonnes, so it makes short work of coping with fibreglass. Once it's lined up, it's glued into place. So that's the theory. How difficult is it to make something in practice? We're in the area where they fabricate all the glass fibre parts, and Chris is going to teach me how to do it. You just keep on turning your cloth, because you I don't know if you'll see now. You can see the yellow, mm -hmm. which is the wax that you've just fetched off. So if you don't turn your cloth, you're just rubbing it in, basically. You're not actually cleaning it off. And then after this, there's a gel coat that we put on. Whichever colour you, what parts your truck is, um, you'll put a gel coat on and you can put... We put two gel coats on. It's so shiny. <laughs> it's really nice. While I polish the surface of a glass fibre section with wax, Chris prepares the gel. 
to get a good mix up. Right, so, basically, just apply a layer on. Does it matter which way the brush goes? No, it's, no, not really. I, it shouldn't really matter, as, as long as you get it, get it on. So, there you go. Quite scary. And you have a time limit with that as well. Oh, okay. So, so you've got to get it just right. Yeah. In the right thickness, the right smoothness. We've also only got a limited amount of time. Yeah, you've got a limited amount of time, it, and it depends on the weather. So in the summer, do you have problems with it going off too quickly if it's a very hot day, for example? Yeah, you can do. Typically, it, it, if it is hot, really hot day, that you do have to just put. You have to really move. It's a very strong chemical smell. Do you? Does it? Not bother you? You must get used to it because I can't smell it. Can you not? <laughs> it's a bit like painting your nails but on a much grander scale. It's quite a satisfying job though, isn't it? I think it's so clever that you can you can make these walls and you can create these shapes of your very own right here. I wonder if they need another worker in the fiberglass department before any of the glass fiber panels can be attached to the truck it needs to be specifically modified what stage of the process are you at here this will be ready for the wiring loom and then the floors we cut the rear of the chassis off and fit the two swan necks and the back chassis section so what's so, the swan neck so basically this is the swan neck um, this bolts to the existing chassis and the chassis extensions there need to bolt to the swan neck here Eventually, the workshop floor will then sit on here uh, and get bolted down. So this has to be really, really strong. Yeah. These metal reinforcements must support the weight of the motorhome. The customised truck is extended at the back with a special modification using a metal bracket called a swan neck. So this is the swan neck actually already fitted. Uh, we've got one over here if you'd like to have a go at doing one. Definitely. OK. The swan neck extension will typically provide the basis for a bedroom and somewhere to store motorcycles or a small car. So get that on there, put that finger on. Yeah. And then just open yeah. Oh, it's heavy. Yeah. The final step in this process is to tighten each nut and bolt to exactly the same degree. Oh, I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Holding tight. Yeah, go on. Ah! That's it. Yeah, you can. A special wrench is used, which is preset to tighten the bolts to the same load. You just feel a slight Like that? Yeah, that's it. It's quite satisfying, isn't it? This prevents uneven movement or flexing, which could make a bolt work loose or even break. At Heimer in Germany, they also strip the base vehicle back, but go even further than RS. Every motorhome starts with a chassis, and it's here that chassis are stripped down and specially adapted before making their journey down the Heimer production line. It all begins with a chassis. This forms the base for the whole vehicle. Onto this will be added the interiors and wall panels. It might look a little odd at this stage, but it's fully functioning and they can drive it round the factory to be assembled. It takes around three days to turn one of these into a completely equipped motorhome. The chassis are from two of Europe's biggest and best known motor manufacturers. I'm on Lion 31, we have a a daily production of five to nine vehicles. They are our caravans. They are um, smaller and much easier to build. In the second line, the Lion 32, we have a um, production of six to eight vehicles. On production line 33, we have also a production of seven to nine vehicles. And the last one, the last line, Lion 34, it's a production between five and eight vehicles because they are the, the biggest one and they need more time to complete. The first job is to create a base, the flooring. It's got to be strong but light because it's important these vehicles are lightweight. 
There's a safe weight limit Heimer cannot exceed, so they use GRP fiberglass. To fix the floor to the chassis, they use a rubber-binded glue. It's exceedingly strong, and it needs to be. The flooring must be totally flat, because this is the platform on which the rest of the vehicle is constructed. A few extra bolts go in to make sure the whole structure is secure. They remove the driver's cab before they install custom seats for the driver and front passenger. This is where motorhome design becomes rather clever. To make the most of the space, these seats don't just look forward. They can be turned around to face backwards as well, where they can be part of day-to-day -day living in the motorhome. The base of the seat can turn through a full circle. Installing them is quite a quick process and it means every centimetre of the vehicle is utilised as living space. What happens next is the biggest difference between the way the two companies work. On Heimer's production line, the interiors are put in before the walls go on. Each bit of furniture is lined up carefully, ready to be installed. This is a critical part of the line. With space so carefully mapped out, every bit of furniture needs to be exactly in place. The beds are installed, seats are put in, the bathroom starts to take shape, and the kitchen comes together. Complex crane manoeuvres are needed. No time can be wasted, so it's important the correct pieces are available on the crane at the right time to be put into position. Furniture slots together and is secured in place with special pegs, which line up the units and leave no margin for error. Once the furniture is in place, it's the turn of the electrics. Modern motorhomes are packed full of the latest technology and each bit needs to be wired up correctly. If the right procedure isn't followed, there could be a serious risk of damage or fire. Everything is embedded within the furniture and will be hidden from sight once the wall panels are installed. To highlight this difference in approach between Heimer building from the inside and RS building the walls first and then fitting the interior, let's pick up the build story again at RS Motorhomes. Right, they're all tight. Oh boy, brilliant. Right, so the next thing that we do now will be the floors, the sides and the roof. We've got a vehicle over here if you want to come and have a quick look. Yep. This motorhome has already had the metalwork for the base adapted and is entering the next stage of the build. You can see we've fitted the first floor, which fits down to the cross members, which I've shown you on the other vehicle. Uh, that gets bonded down, bolted down. We then fit the sides. Uh, you can see from the inside, you start with a layer of GRP, uh, layer of plywood. That's the aluminium itself and foam. That's for heat and noise insulation as well. So the walls are made up of a sandwich with two layers of GRP and then all the insulation and everything else in the middle? Yep, that's right. OK. So, as you can see here, these are the upper floor supports. Mm -hmm. These get bolted down to the lower floor. The aluminium strip comes the full length of the vehicle and then the upper floor gets bolted down to that. That's ultimately what you're going to walk on in the end. Continuing the RS technique of building inwards, not from the inside out like Heimer, the next stage is to add customised parts which replace the standard fittings so the driver has direct access to the living area. What happens next is not what you might expect. The largest section of the original piece from the donor vehicle is discarded and the small outer shape is the only part to be used in the new motorhome. The modified liners are fitted around the back of the driver's cab. OK. Put the rubber on. Yep. So this is the original seal again going back on? Yeah. Yeah, and that just traps, that just traps the liner in place. Thousands of bolts and screws are used to assemble one vehicle and must be delivered by hand. In total contrast to mass production, where robots do most of the work. Great. Easy. Looks a lot the same. Yeah. This part of the process is quite straightforward. 
even an untrained novice like me can play a part in delivering such a complicated, high-tech end product. Now that the walls, roof and floor are in place, the next stage of the build is the interior. To maintain a high level of quality, Hymer ensures that over 80% of the parts fitted in a motorhome are manufactured by Hymer themselves. Every day, between 10,000 and 15,000 parts are fed through here and handled by a specialist team of carpenters and craftsmen. With over 40 motorhomes leaving the production line each day, a lot of furniture is constructed on site. It's all about speed whilst maintaining quality. And with years of experience, Heimer really know their furniture. As everything is made from plywood, to keep the wood the same width throughout construction, humidity is kept at a constant level in the manufacturing areas. We have different uh, areas for the bedroom, for the shower, for the toilet, for the kitchen, and every worker has his, its own area. Each worker gets a kit of parts to start constructing different elements of the motorhome interior. At every stage, the weight of the materials is important. These vehicles must be light. So they tend to use thin, ply-based wood boards, which keep moisture out. With all the parts finished, this electrician puts the components together. Here, an oven gets installed. Gas pipes and the electrical supply to the kitchen is fitted. Drawers slipped into their gaps before the unit is put through quality control, with every connection and drawer checked. When the installation is complete, it's signed off and ready to go on the production line for shell and soft furnishings assembly. Each shell at RS is a box construction with customised windows and access panels. The type and layout of the furniture going inside varies with every vehicle. No two are the same. With the fully erected shell, the team can start the job knowing exactly how much space they have to work with. The vehicle is firstly fitted with a material interior, which is bonded to the walls with a strong spray adhesive. Once that's complete, the various bits of furniture can be installed. It's all about making effective use of the space available. A double bed above the cab allows for storage during the day and a bed at night and keeps what is quite a large part of the home out of the way when not in use. At RS, every vehicle is unique, with different specifications and individual designs. Though just like every motorhome with space at a premium, furniture needs to be multi-purpose. During the day, this will be a sofa, though at night it converts to a bed with storage underneath it. Though a CNC machine cuts out all the parts, a human touch is needed to put them together using carpentry, with saws used to trim to size, drills to join parts together, chisels to tidy up, and sandpaper to finish. Each bit of furniture is a component that goes towards creating the overall home environment essential for any motorhome. After making the walls, after cutting out the windows, fitting them, fitting the ceilings and the floors, this is where the interiors come in and where it starts to look like, well, a real home. The seating here, up here we've got a second bed which really cleverly hides away when you're not using it. Cabinets along here, a full kitchen. You could cook a proper meal in here. And then back here, through your ensuite bathroom. And then you have a full double bedroom. The space is so well used in here that you even get things like a really good sized shower. 
So this camp is almost complete. The hard fittings are pretty much in, and then they're going to bring the soft furnishings in, the wall coverings, the sofas. But it's really starting to look like a proper little home. And then it's going to be ready for all of its adventures. RS Motorhomes was started by somebody who couldn't find what they wanted, so he designed and created it himself. That's why people keep coming back here. Every single motorhome they make is custom designed and built, and the range of processes and the control they have over them means that every single thing they create is of outstanding beauty and quality. Back at Hymer, this is where the motorhome really takes shape and transforms what started off as a bare truck chassis into a recognizable vehicle. It's vital the wall panels are fitted correctly to ensure water tightness. It takes 42 bolts to attach the side walls and the rear panels to the body. The fiberglass front panel is unique to Hymer. It's designed in-house and converts the donor vehicle into this very distinctive product. The panel is attached from the inside, so there are no external holes which could leak. Then it's the turn of the roof. Brought in overhead with a crane, the roof is lowered down before being clamped into place. Sealant is added to ensure it's watertight. Glue bonds the roof to the walls and rear. It's wiped off and cleaned up. Upholstering the interiors means Hymer have to cut a great deal of cloth to size, and often they are quite long strips. There are different fabrics to deal with, for carpets, upholstering the seats, and for the bedding. Keeping it in-house cuts down on wastage, delays, and ensures the operation is cost efficient. All that's left to do now is install the various pillows and fittings of the interior. The choice of style and material varies from customer to customer. We put a lot of efforts in understanding the needs of the customers. And for example, in the French market, customers want to have a central bed. Yeah? In Germany, they want to have two single beds. Yeah? If an oven, customers want to have specific layouts where you can sit inside when it's raining. Yeah? Customers want to have different uh, color and trim, different furniture. So we spend a lot of time in understanding that and transferring it in our products that customers feel that we really develop the product for their market. Quick inspection, I check the light works and it's finished. The weather in many parts of Europe can be a little unpredictable, so it's important motorhomes can cope with wet weather. Manufacturers go to great lengths to make sure each vehicle is checked for possible leaks. The last thing you want is rain pouring inside as well as outside. Motorhomes are not just for sunny days. They need to withstand all weather conditions. Therefore, it's vital that they are watertight. Here, at this specialist facility, every Hymer motorhome is put through rigorous testing to check for any leaks. I just hope the engineers have done their job properly, or I'm going to get very wet. I've been given the chance to sit inside as it's run through the water tightness test. So right now we're driving into the testing facility and we're going to be putting this motorhome through its paces. I imagine this is probably what it's like taking a motorhome around England. This engineer is checking by eye and by touch for any tiny water leaks through every single seam and joint. Oh. 
so far, so good. Looks like all the workmanship is at a top-notch standard. So this moto has been put through the water tightness test, and I'm happy to say it passed with flying colours. Another fully tested Hymer motorhome is ready to hit the road. But for my final test, I'm back in Britain at RS. Now I know what it takes to build one of these things. But what I don't know is how they drive. So I'm going to take one out on the road. Wish me luck. The Equinox is the smallest motorhome in the RS range, but still seems vast compared to what I'm used to driving. It doesn't feel like a van. It feels like a car. It's really nice. Although it's massive. a really cool trip in this. You know, either on your own or with a mate. It's a really nice van. And I don't think I'd want to drive for days, but you could certainly kind of go through Europe, go up and down the UK, stop, it would be lovely. It's just the right size for one person, maybe two people if you like each other a lot. But it's got loads of storage in the back, so you can just imagine you, you can fill it with the most amazing kit and just spend your free time traveling up and down the country, just having loads of fun and going on massive adventures. You can feel it when you brake. You can feel the weight of the vehicle when you brake. The brakes are really, really sensitive. The nice thing about this most home is even though it's big and it feels scary to me because it's under three and a half tons I can drive it on my regular driving license you don't need a special license it's quite exciting because there's a big boot at the back and also you've got a bed you've got a shower you've got everything in here and you kind of sit here thinking what could I do what could I do with this van where could I go what can I carry in bikes in the back, put loads of stuff in and just go off on adventures. It would be amazing. I think we've already converted. <laughs>